In my first video on the Roman ruins of Athens, I've taken a look around the colossal temple of Olympian Zeus, the unusually placed Hadrian's Arch, and the remains of a funeral monument high on top of Philopapa's Hill. But you know what? There's so many Roman ruins in Athens that they need a second part video. In this video, I'll be taking a look around the northern slopes of the Acropolis, where the remains of public buildings that were part of everyday life almost 2,000 years ago still stand today. These separate archaeological sites are easy to reach from the Monastiraki metro station, and you shouldn't lose your bearings walking around the city streets, as all the while, the Acropolis will loom overhead to act as a landmark. Although the ancient Greeks were well known for their achievements in the field of science, mathematics and philosophy, the Romans were heavily influenced by Greek culture, and so built places of learning within their cities. Passing the Byzantine Church of the Virgin Mary, and crossing the small Monastiraki Square, you can't miss the first stop, as a huge wall with columns comes into view. Built as one of the many additions to the city during the reign of Emperor Hadrian, only the outer walls survive today of what would have been a very impressive complex back in its day. Many of the ruins here in Athens actually date back to the times of the ancient Roman occupation, and one of the largest of these is the Library of Hadrian. As with many buildings in the city, the library was severely damaged during the raid by the Heruli tribe in 267 AD. It looks like some effort has gone into restoring parts of the site just to give more of an idea of what it would have originally looked like. These white blocks, for example, look way too clean to have stood there for almost 2,000 years. As you explore further into the site, You'll notice that there are a lot of foundations in semicircular shapes, and these actually have nothing to do with the Roman library building. The centre, which would have been the courtyard of the Roman library, once held a religious building that was replaced many times before ultimately falling into disrepair. Starting with a basilica established in the 5th century AD, the original building was destroyed around a century later, and replaced by a three-aisled basilica. This in turn was ruined by the 11th century, and replaced with a chapel that survived until 1885, when it burnt down. I'm no expert, but I'd say that makes this a pretty cursed piece of land to build a religious building on. A series of four columns with some severely eroded blocks above them are some of the most photogenic remains that are left here amongst the masonry and foundations. Signs are provided around the site that give information on the remains that are before you, and these are certainly needed, as nothing but foundations survive in most cases here. Telltale signs of the engineering and architectural genius of the ancient Romans can be clearly seen at this site, however, such as the drainage channels and floors decorated with mosaics. If the ruins of the library and the basilicas are a bit difficult to picture what would have once stood here, you can get a better view from exiting the site and walking around one of the side streets that offers a higher vantage point of the remains. And these narrow streets will lead us nicely on to the next stop.
Another Roman site just a few metres away from the library is the Roman Agora, or Marketplace. The beating heart of any ancient Roman city, the Agora was where the locals and traders would come to buy and sell their wares, and the site today still gives an idea of the activity that would have once taken place here. Entrance to the Agora is by the remains of the Gate of Athena Archigetis, an impressive structure consisting of Doric columns built from pentelic marble and constructed around 11 BC using funds raised by the Roman Emperor. Even if it is now enclosed behind the iron gates of the archaeological site and surrounded by townhouses, this is typical of what you'd expect of a temple-like ancient ruin. Walking on through the site, to the right there is a large colonnade with pillars that vary greatly in terms of how much has survived. Some are mere stumps, whereas others are pretty much at their full height. Dating back to the reign of Emperor Augustus, it predates the library of Hadrian by around 150 years. This site in particular, north of the Acropolis, is an amazing representation of hundreds of years of civilizations having occupied this city. You have the Roman Forum, an Ottoman mosque dating back to the 15th century, and the strange object that is the Tower of the Winds. The fact that the Ottomans controlled this city from the 15th century onwards could potentially be a reason as to why this site and others like it in Athens survives to the present day, instead of having been entirely destroyed and the land reused for new building projects. Captured during the reign of Sultan Mehmed the Conqueror, the same man who had taken the city of Constantinople in 1453, he was known to be an admirer of the ancient world, and so he was likely to be very impressed by the new city he had just taken. To the eastern end of the Agora is one of the more stranger ancient ruins that can be found in the city of Athens. Rising up 12 metres is an octagonal building known as the Tower of the Winds, considered to be the world's first meteorological station. It has been given this name as the decorations at the top of the tower depict eight Greek deities associated with the winds. Retained over the centuries after Roman rule, the tower also saw service as a bell tower for a Byzantine Orthodox church, and after having been buried for a while, saw use for religious rituals during the later Ottoman occupation of Athens. Looking a bit unusual compared to other typical Greek and Roman constructions of the time, it operated to measure time and weather by use of sundials, a water clock and a weather vane. Of course, nowadays, I'll just use my watch. There was no access to the interior of the building when I visited, but it was interesting to view nonetheless. Together with my previous sites in the other video of Roman Ruins of Athens, if you like walking around ancient archaeological sites, you'll be spoilt for choice here in Athens. These two sites are very much the Athens equivalent of the Roman Forum in Rome, which also features a huge array of ruined buildings in various states of disrepair that can be leisurely walked around. Some of them certainly need a lot of imagination to picture the bustling everyday activities that would have been carried out here around 2000 years ago, though it's always better to see something remaining of the past than nothing. And don't forget, these two videos only cover the Roman ruins of Athens. Just up the road there's a whole different site of ancient Greek ones, and it just so happens I've done a video on those as well. If you have enjoyed this video, why not leave a like and follow my channel for more, and I'll bring you many more places from around Athens, as well as many other historical places from the rest of the world. However, until next time, see you around.